Upon the death of a citizen, the ancient Greeks would ask one question when trying to synopsize that person's life. They would ask, was this an individual that lived their life with great passion? May God bless each and every one of you who's here tonight. May he give you strength, wisdom, and help. May he always be with you to allow for you to pass through the difficult and challenging times that we will all face. But may he always allow for you to find what it is that you're looking for and allow for the strength, the wisdom, and the ability to always find your way back home. Albert Einstein had a fantastic quote when they asked him about life. For he said, as you go through your days, you can choose to find that there are no miracles at all, or you can choose to find the miracles in everything, the miracles in life, the miracles in your friends, the miracles in your family, the miracles that exist every day through God's great glory. I think we come here tonight because we simply have to believe that extraordinary things can, will, and must happen for each and every single one of us. I always remember awakening at Mount Sinai Hospital after having gone through a catastrophic event as I lay in the trauma unit I remember that Hashem sent to me a special person as he always does there will always be people that enter our lives at just the right time and at just the right moment and who will share words with us that we need to hear for this man came to my bedside, and his name was Rabbi Chaim Molesky from the Chabad of the Upper West Side. And this rabbi taught me the most valuable lesson. For he let me realize that other than the choice that we as humans make, as it pertains to the great power struggle that exists between forces of good versus evil, that everything else that happens in our life, that everything else that happens to us has been inscribed, has been set forth, has been etched into the great book of life. But the one great power that we as humans have is how do we choose to react to the lives that Hashem has chosen for us? How do we choose to react to the fates that Hashem has granted each and every one of us? And what you simply come to find is that an easy life does not always correspond to a good one. And that often it is the case that those who know challenge, that those who know hardship, that those who know difficulty come to understand and appreciate why they were created. They come to understand and appreciate why they were sent here, what their mission is, and they come to realize that Hashem has bestowed the greatest blessing upon them that he could ever bestow. For he's given the blessing of connection, understanding, and empathy with the challenges and difficulties and hardships of our fellow man. I remember having a conversation right after winning the election. We were talking about what are the qualities that make a good judge. And the people I was talking with said, well, that's easy. A good judge is a person who's a great writer. A good judge is a person with an outstanding curriculum vitae. A good judge is someone with a very high IQ. And I remember telling them, I think you've missed the most important thing. 
when they asked me, well, what else is there? I said, the qualities that you've given are all qualities that can be learned on the job. <coughs> but the most important quality is our life experience. For it is life experience that allows for us to understand and appreciate the world in which we live. It's our life experience that gives us our spirit, that gives us our soul, that gives us our essence. The more challenge and difficulty and hardship that is given to us, the kinder, the warmer, the more understanding we can be, the better we are at being able to serve, help, relate, and ultimately connect. Hashem gives us our life experiences for a reason. He gives them to us because he wants us to use them to help other people, to impact others. But if we don't have life experience, if we don't have hardship, if we don't have challenge, if we don't have difficulty, we won't have that ability. We won't have that wisdom. We won't have that wherewithal. I remember as a young attorney getting a call one morning. There are certain conversations that you have that you simply will never forget. It was a wonderful Orthodox mother. And she called me because she knew that <coughs> Disability issues was something that I had a great passion for. I dedicated my life to. And she had some questions for me. She wanted to understand why it was <clears throat> that she could be such a good person, a kind person, a righteous and a pious person. <clears throat> she followed all the rules. She did everything that was asked of her. She wanted to understand why it was that Hashem would give her a child with severe disabilities. What kind of a life was my new baby going to have, she asked. Do you think he's ever going to have any friends? Do you think he'll have a chance to go to school? Do you think he'll ever get married and have a family? Do you think he'll ever live independently? And she went on to ask, do you think that my family and myself and my newborn child will ever have the opportunity to have an ordinary life? And when do you think we'll finally have the chance to stop having to suffer. I remember answering her by saying this. Hashem did not create you, your child, or your family, to simply be ordinary. I believe that your child was sent here he was given to you to be extraordinary. And I don't believe that at any point you're ever going to suffer, but you will have to struggle. And it is that struggle that's going to allow for you to find your identity, to find that strength, to find that purpose to live with that incredible passion. In essence, I think the question that we all ask, which is why many of us turn to Chabad, because of our own struggles and challenges and difficulties, we are all asking the question, why? Why is it that if Shem is so merciful and kind that he allows for bad things to happen to otherwise such good people. 
And why is it, as we look to the book of Job, that there are some who have to walk among us that know a greater struggle and a greater challenge and a greater hardship than others can possibly imagine or even begin to fathom? If Hashem is so great, why does he allow for this? Why do these things happen? We worship Hashem, we praise Hashem, and yet why is it that there is this suffering? Why is it that there is this pain? Why is it that there is this difficulty? Why is it that a God that we worship allows for this to happen to us? I think what you find as you go through life that those who do have the challenge and the difficulty and the hardship have an incredible connection with the Creator, <clears throat> an understanding and a belief that is incredibly strong. For yes, there are many who walk among us whose bodies are mortal and infirmed. But it is always those people whose spirits know no bounds, who know incredible strength, who live with a resilience that can simply never be defined. Now, I've been blessed. I've had the opportunity to complete 19 marathons and a full Ironman competition. For those of you who are unfamiliar, an Ironman competition is a 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike to be completed by a 26.2 mile run. The rules of the competition are quite simple. If you stop, if you rest, if you take a break, you run the risk of missing a cutoff. If a cutoff is missed, you will be immediately disqualified from the competition. If you finish at 12.05 and not 12 o'clock, it is like you were never even there. Two years of effort and work will simply be for nothing. So I invite you to picture, if you would, the feeling you would have as you dive into a frigid body of water. The water temperature that morning of Lake Coeur d'Alene was 55 degrees. <laughs> now imagine, if you would, the feeling you would have as you attempt to swim in total darkness. You don't have any idea where you are. You don't have any idea where you're going. But most terrifyingly, you don't have any idea where you currently are. Being the only disabled person in the competition, you get kicked in the face by all the other swimmers who don't realize that you are blind. And because of your blindness, you can't brace for the ensuing impact. So as people kick you, you feel it over and over and over again in the face, but there's simply nothing you can do about it. You try to surface, but it's almost next to impossible because there's other swimmers who are immediately above you. And lastly, other competitors become entangled and ensnared in the rope that connects you to your guide. The more that you struggle, the more that you attempt to break free, the more intense the rope becomes, the more constrictive it gets, and the quicker it starts taking you below the surface. You try to get oxygen, but it's next to impossible because the harder you try to get your head above the water, the faster the waves come and crash down upon you, and the quicker it feels the rope starts taking you below. Chabad teaches us the most valuable lesson of all. If you have a strong belief, if you have a strong faith, Hashem will always get you there. You always seem to find when it's difficult and painful, you always seem to realize that you have 
of exactly what you need when you need it. You never have anything more, but you never seem to have anything less either. There are miracles that happen each and every day. And if you choose to see them, they happen all around you. Connection, beauty, warmth, understanding, empathy. We have a lot of people here that are younger. That always gets me excited whenever you have a chance to talk to young people. Because I want to kind of speak to you just for a quick moment. Chabad is a great instrument for not just Judaism, but for life, for what it means, for what it represents, for its eternal essence. What you come to realize when you face some challenge and difficulty and struggle is that life is never about a snapshot. You're going to have some good days and you're going to have some bad. But if you can have just enough good days to balance out the bad, or just one good day that makes it all worthwhile, and I think we've learned the most important way to live, which is to live with a totality. Never live as though it's a snapshot. Never live as though it's one day. I always see it as the totality that life is. And it's those lessons that Chabad teaches that play the most valuable role. It was a beautiful morning in New York's Central Park. I was walking in the pedestrian lane. I've memorized the loop that serves as a circumference of Central Park, so I'm able to walk unescorted without assistance. It's a beautiful August morning. As I was walking in the pedestrian lane, at that point I had done 17 marathons and a full Ironman. Bicyclist was traveling in excess of 35 miles per hour. And due to his high rate of speed, he ultimately lost control. And in doing so, he veered into the pedestrian lane where I was walking and struck me directly in the back. A 35 mile an hour impact is catastrophic to say the least. It required over 10 weeks of hospitalization at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. So why is it? Why is it that Hashem, who is all powerful and all merciful, would strike somebody down? Why is it that he would take someone who used athletics to find their voice find their strength, to find their identity, and make them have to live in a hospital bed. It's those simple things you miss the most. You miss what it's like to have the chance to take a shower or use the bathroom. You miss what it's like to have the chance to be able to lie in bed without having to feel a writhing pain. But what Chabad teaches us is the lesson that I was able to see all too well when people would come to visit. I'd ask them to tell me, so where are you going after you visit with me today? And they would say in a very rudimentary way that they were gonna go and visit some friends or pick up their dry cleaning or maybe get some dinner. I always tell them that those are the things that you have to cherish. Those are the things that you have to savor. Those are the things that make life what it is. And those of us that face disability or face sickness or face challenge or face struggle, it's those simple things that we really crave. It's those simple things that we never seem to take for granted. It's those simple things that keep us going. 
It's those simple things that we fight for, that we long for. It's those simple things that we dream about. And it's those simple things that ultimately make life what it is. Give it its meaning and its purpose. And it's those simple things that we never take for granted. But if there's one thing that we come to realize from life experience, is that we have to celebrate each and every day. And we have to celebrate each and every victory. No matter how small or inconsequential you might think it is, we have to celebrate it. We have to recognize it. We have to honor it for what it is. In my situation, you would celebrate the fact that you could finally muster up the strength to sit up in your bed. You forget about the fact that you had done 17 marathons. You forget about the fact that you were an Ironman. Today, you focus on your new life, on your new circumstance, on your new situation, and you celebrate the fact that you can sit up. You celebrate the fact that you can start using a walker, and you celebrate the fact that with a lot of help and a lot of assistance, you can actually make it to the nurse's station. You never look behind, you have to look ahead. And by no means is that ever easy. So why is it that these things happen? Why is it that Hashem allows these bad things to happen to otherwise good people? And why is it that there are always those who walk among us that have to know this greater struggle and this greater hardship? And I would simply tell you this. It is those experiences. It is those challenges. It is those struggles that allows for me to be the justice that I am. To have that understanding of the challenges and the difficulties and the hardships of those who come before me. To know and experience what life means and what life represents. To have the empathy and the compassion that it takes. Those life experiences are given to us for a reason and it's up to us to use them to do something profound. To do something meaningful. To do something worthwhile. To do something impactful. In my last remaining moments before you today, I will share with you one last story. It was about two years ago, and it was time for the New York City Marathon. Now, this would be my 18th marathon, but it would be the first after a catastrophic injury. Now, running the New York City Marathon on a shattered hip and a shattered pelvis was going to be difficult, to say the least. But in life, you simply have to turn a page. You simply have to start writing a new chapter. You simply have to start realizing that the future is before you. And you simply realize that it's time to move forward. As we ran to the streets of New York, I will always remember as the pain grew unbelievably intensive, we reached mile 18 as we started up First Avenue towards the Bronx. I remember reaching up to the heavens and praying to Hashem that he would give me the strength to finish. For I said, Hashem, I can live and tolerate the pain, but I pray that you will allow for me to finish this goal, to cross that line, and to achieve this mission without losing consciousness. I need you to allow for me to do this so that I will not pass out before the objective has been reached. And yes, there are miracles abound. Because it was at that moment and at that time that I came to realize something remarkable about Hisham. It was right at that moment that I was able to find a sense of peace. A peace with my new body, a peace with my new life, a peace with my new situation. But most importantly, there are certain moments and times of life that it's with that struggle and it's with that pain and it's with that hardship that you are able to find a sense of peace with Hashem. So why do bad things happen to otherwise such good people? And why are there some that have to know a greater struggle and a greater hardship than others? 
I believe that what Chabad teaches us is the most valuable lesson that goes to what life is about. That at a certain time, in a certain moment, in a certain way, you can't spend your energy and your time and your effort focusing on trying to get over it. For you realize that you simply have no other choice but to just get on with it. For it is through the challenge and the struggle and the adversity that we will do what is hard to achieve what is great. And we come together tonight to celebrate the mission and the meaning of Hashem, which is translated to us through the work and the energy and the efforts of Chabad. And it's tonight that we come to realize that we must live our lives as great poets, as great authors, as great novelists. And within any great novel, there must always exist chapters. There must always exist chapters of pain and frustration and setback. For it is only through those chapters that you can come to understand and appreciate the chapters of hope, the chapters of joy, but ultimately the chapters of true triumph. For we gather here tonight to celebrate life Life the way Hashem intended for it to be. Life for its good and life for its bad. But we celebrate the journey that we're on, the mission that we have, and the work that we're able to do. We gather here tonight to celebrate the idea that no matter who we are or where we're from, extraordinary things can, will, and must happen for us all. But most importantly, we gather here tonight to celebrate the beauty of life and the world that Hashem has bestowed upon to us. And we celebrate the idea that yes, our bodies are mortal, but it is our souls and it is our spirits that are truly all powerful. And with that, let us say as a community who celebrates together the lives that we have been given, amen. The Roar Jewish Learning Institute has the largest collection of Jewish media online. Hit subscribe for more.